Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about volumes of certain space figures called prisms. Prisms have two faces in parallel planes, and these faces are congruent polygons. So for example, in the prism on the left, we have a triangular face at the top and a congruent triangular face at the bottom. Similarly, in the prism on the right, we have a five-sided regular polygon, so that's called a pentagon. That pentagon shape is in a plane at the top and a parallel plane at the bottom of the prism. Those faces that are congruent polygons, they can be any shape. Prisms are named according to that shape. On the left here, I have a rectangular prism, a hexagonal prism, and a pentagonal prism. We actually have already learned about finding the volume of a box, and a box is an example of a rectangular prism. We learned that the volume of a box can be thought of as the length times width times height, but we also learned that you can think of it as the area of the base times the height because this face at the top, this has dimensions W by L, I could refer to this area as capital B. B is the area of the base. Well, it turns out that no matter what shape of the base is, we can still find the volume the same way by multiplying the area of the base times the height. So let's try this one. We're going to find the volume of the given triangular prism. We know that our height in this diagram is equal to seven meters. We're gonna need to find the area of that triangle. The area of the triangle is gonna be one half little b times h. The height of the triangle and the base of the triangle are two different quantities in the base and height I'm talking about over here. You gotta be careful not to get those two confused. All right, so anyway, the area of the triangle is one half six times four, so that's half of 24, which is 12, and area is always measured in square units. So the area of that base is 12 square meters. If we want the volume of the prism, we're going to take that area of the base and multiply it times the height of the prism. So that's going to be 12 square meters times seven meters. That's going to be 84 cubic meters. Remember, volume is always measured in cubic units. So we can apply the same idea for finding volumes of boxes to volumes of any prism. And actually, right circular cylinders, they work the same way as well. We can still find the volume of a right circular cylinder by finding the area of the base times the height. It just so happens that for a right circular cylinder, the area of the base is the area of a circle. Well, if it's a circle of radius r, the area of the base is pi r squared. I'm just going to give it the name capital B for area of the base, so we know the volume of the cylinder is the area of the base times the height, which is exactly why the formula for the right circular cylinder looks like volume equals pi r squared h, the area of the base times the height. We can also find the surface area of a right circular cylinder fairly easily. To do that, I'm going to draw out the net, which is where you peel the object apart. So it's going to kind of look like a squished soda can, right? We've taken apart the top and the bottom and folded out the, uh, the sides of the can and it forms a rectangle. One dimension of that rectangle is H. The other dimension, which we will need if we're going to get the surface area, notice that that's exactly the distance around the circle, which we call the circumference of a circle. And you probably remember that the circumference is two pi times the radius. So the area of the sides of the can, if you imagine a soda can being flattened out, the area here is going to be two pi r times h. Okay, but that doesn't include the area of the top and the bottom. Let's look at this surface area formula over here. Two pi r h is the sides of the can. 
that we just found. Where do you think they're getting the two pi r squared from? Well, those are the two circles. The area of this circle is pi r squared. The area of this circle is pi r squared. We have two of them. So the total surface area is two pi r h plus two pi r squared. Mostly I just need you to recognize that it's the correct formula and use it. So let's try that. Here we have a right circular cylinder that has a height of 10 and a radius of its base is two meters. So let's find the volume and the surface area. The volume is going to be pi times r is 2, so we're going to have 2 squared times h is 10. So the volume is going to be 4 times 10, which is 40, and then times pi. And the units are given in cubic meters. When you're working with any object that circles in it, pi comes up a lot. Remember, pi is the number that's approximately 3.14, but it's a decimal that goes on forever without repeating, without terminating. There's no way we can write the whole thing out, so we write the Greek letter pi. This is the only way to give an exact solution. Very frequently in your homework, they will ask you to leave pi in your answer, or they'll say, give an exact solution. And then you give your answer like this. However, if they ask you to approximate the answer, they will often tell you to use 3.14 for pi. And when they do that, don't make the mistake of using the pi button on your calculator, because that will that won't round off to 3.14 and it'll give you a slightly different answer and it could mess you up. So just type in 3.14. So I'm going to find the approximate value of this volume using 3.14 as an estimate for pi. I'm gonna have to put in my calculator 40 times 3.14 and let's see what I get. Okay, that comes out to be 125.6, and I still need to put the cubic meters. So if they ask you for an exact answer on the volume, you'd say 40 pi cubic meters. If they ask you for an approximation using 3.14 as pi, you'll say 125.6 cubic meters. Now let's find the surface area for this right circular cylinder. So the formula for surface area is 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. Again, r is 2 meters, h is 10. So our surface area is going to be 2 times pi times r, which is 2, times h, which is 10, plus 2 times pi times 2 squared. Remember the order in which you multiply doesn't matter, but you have to multiply before you add. So I'm going to have 2 times 2 is 4 times 10 is 4. 40 pi plus 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8, so 8 pi. Now you can add these together, they're like terms, just like if you had an x, it's just you have a pi instead. So 40 pi's plus 8 pi's totals 48 pi's all together. What would the units be? Well, surface area is an area, so it's measured in square units, so this is going to be square meters. This would be your exact solution. A lot of times people are bothered by that. They think an exact solution needs to be a decimal, but no. When I say exact, leave pi in your answer. So how do we get the approximate solution? So if I ask you to approximate using 3.14 for pi, you're going to type that into your calculator. So 48 times 3.14 would be the approximate value, not the exact value, of the surface area. So on my calculator, I got 150.72, and that's still going to be in square meters. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.